This is a study we did with infliximab. It's an anti-TNF, anti-inflammatory drug. I'll keep it brief. We looked at people who have bipolar depression. Half got placebo, half got this treatment across 12 weeks. I was trying to test the concept that this anti-inflammatory could treat their depression. We put in the protocol, we wanted to look at the whole set, but especially people with a history of trauma. And what we found was in people who had a history of trauma, we started to see separation of, of the two arms. And people have often asked me, should I test for CRP in my patient? Well, that's a longer conversation. The most inexpensive way to index inflammation in your patient is just to ask them, have you ever been traumatized? That tends to activate the inflammasome system. This isn't, oh, over to you, Vlad. Yes, and uh, we'll just quickly go through a couple more slides. TMS uh, impacts on dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, as you know, has top-down regulation of emotion. Uh, it can be hypothetically procognitive. And what we are seeing is TMS also significantly reduces anhedonia. As a matter of fact, reduction in anhedonia is very much correlated to improvement in depression mm, mm. as response to TMS. And uh, how about psychotherapy? This is an interesting thing. So there is something that is called BATA, which is behavioral activation treatment for anhedonia. It is a specific treatment modality, psychotherapy for anhedonia. What are some of the elements? Setting realistic goals, number one. Two, dealing with behavioral avoidance. You have spoken, Roger, about uh, uh, learning based on reward. People who have depression are very much aware of the effort it takes to go out and socialize. And then when they don't socialize, it's not such a wonderful experience. Mm. So they're even less likely to engage. Mm -hmm. In other words, behavioral avoidance sets in. This is something that targets behavioral avoidance. Invites people to dabble, try new things. There may be other things that you will find engaging and interesting. And fourth component, fully immerse yourself. Uh, find all the pleasurable elements in a certain experience. And what we're seeing is it has two consequences. You have mentioned, Roger, that distress and anhedonia are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This treatment improved anhedonia, but also subjective perception of stress. Mm -hmm. So it accomplished both. So to start wrapping the, this up, uh, are all emotions positive and negative similarly uh, attenuated? Uh, no, anhedonia more negative, less positive. In individuals who have emotional blunting, less positive, less negative. If they have apathy, less motivation, less effort. It is associated with lower treatment response, functional impairment, suicide risk, longer time to achieve remission. Mm -hmm. And uh, what if we are caught? What if the treatment we're utilizing is not helping? Think about CBT. Mm -hmm. Think about mindfulness CBT. Think about BATA. Think about potentially combining with RTMS. And think about agents that we have spoken about yep. that may am ameliorate uh, the situation. And the one that you mentioned is really important. Very good anti-inflammatory uh, treatment uh, something that uh, you engage and I contemplate engaging it, and that is regular exercise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> add that to the mix, right? Yeah. So what may work? Agents that boost dopamine, agents that block serotonin 2C and serotonin 3 receptors, NMDA antagonists, you heard about it in an earlier session, D2, D3 partial agonists, kappa opiate receptor antagonist, but also neuromodulatory treatments such as TMS, CBT, exercise, all of those can contribute.